this is something I was not fully prepared for. And it definitely wasn't what I was expecting in general. <laughs> I guess when I thought that you were going to be getting, you know, a biopic for Weird Al Yankovic, I wasn't expecting whatever this film was going to be. First off, let's just say right off the bat, Daniel Radcliffe, fantastic. The only thing that, you know, throws you off a little bit is the fact that I think Daniel Radcliffe is like 5'7 or 5'8. And, you know, Weird Al is fucking like an eight foot tall man. Like, Weird Al is a huge dude. And just, that's the one thing that kind of, you know, you, you, you don't 100% see translating. But then again, it isn't a full biopic. And I guess when you consider that it was, it, you thought that's what it was going to be before it came out, or at least I did, it threw me off right off the bat. Because here's the funny thing. It's not an actual like biopic from the sense that we know biopics to be. It's not like what Bohemian Rhapsody was for Queen or any of that thing. It's not it's not like that at all. What this is, and this is what it's actually called. It's called a American biographical parody film. <laughs> so Weird Al Yankovic did a parody of his own life for this film. And what's even funnier about this it's so crazy to me to think, like, just what I'm seeing when it comes to looking up what this film has behind the scenes. So, two of the, um, the producers of the film, two of the companies that help produce it, is Funny or Die and the Roku channel. Now, I don't know, I don't follow Roku stuff. You know, I follow, like, Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, things like that. So, I don't know if Roku has built up this catalog where they're pushing out these, you know... Th th this regular content of theirs to me that's really weird <laughs> i don't know it might it might just be me that finds that weird but then again you know if roku wants to throw their hat in the ring throw your hat in the ring but this is a very interesting first attempt and i'm not saying it was a failure i'm just saying that i i would have liked an actual bi i mean honestly i don't even know i don't know if i would have liked an actual biopic over the parody biopic. It's just so crazy. The film goes into like Weird Al's story of him growing up as a kid and him being told that he can't, you know, play. Um, what the fuck is the instrument for polka? The fucking accordion. He can't play the accordion. It's like forbidden in this house. It's, you know, a sort of forbidden thing in just society, so to speak. And then he goes to a party where they're like playing polka and he's like, oh no. I can't be here because it's forbidden for me. And then he just winds up like schooling it. And then the cops show up and he's like, we caught him playing poker. And then the father, he, he gets thrown out to the house and the father destroys his accordion. And so as, um, we, uh, weird Al Yankovic gets older. He, you know, is now with these frat guys and he's in college. And they're talking about how he used to love making, music he loved writing new lyrics over already produced music and they're like well show us and he and he's like oh, i haven't really done it in a while because my family didn't really like it and they didn't want me to do it and so he's making a sandwich and then the guys turn on the radio and the radio's playing my sharona and so he's making a sandwich and what's he's making he's making a bologna sandwich and that's meant to lead into his first single which is my bologna <laughs> And for anybody who's a Weird Al Yankovic fan, they know all this music. They know how he did Another One Bites the Dust and it turned into Another One Rides the Bus. And then and then, um, Like a Virgin was Like a Surgeon. You know, all these funny things. And it's just this, this very interesting way that he goes into how each one is kind of made and where he kind of gets it. There's also this really weird storyline where he wakes up out of a, I think a coma or something. I forget exactly, but he writes "Eat It," like "Eat It" is like supposed to be his original song, and then like a year later, Michael Jackson comes out with "Beat It." <laughs> so what they're saying is "Beat It" was a parody of "Eat It." And because Michael Jackson was bigger than Weird Al Yankovic, everybody thought that, oh, yeah, 
Weird Al is the guy who parodies the stuff. This must be a parody. In all actuality, these actually were all parodies. There was nothing really different, you know, from any of the format of what he did for his songs. He picked a random hit song and he parodied it. I don't think Weird Al has ever had any of his original music, but he doesn't need to. He's the the first guy that I know that kind of did this, and it, maybe it's very 90s, but it's hilarious. It's always been hilarious. Then there's this really random storyline with the fact that Pablo Escobar is obsessed with him. So he kidnaps Madonna. Oh, which, by the way, totally forgot to mention this. In the film, Weird Al Yankovic is dating Madonna because Madonna wants to use Weird Al Yankovic to kind of lift up her career because she's like, oh yeah, every time Weird Al parodies a song, like he makes money, but then people go and they find the original. So then they make money. So she like weasels into his circle and kind of like destroys his life just so she can get him to parody one of her songs. And then Pablo Escobar comes and kidnaps Madonna. So Weird Al has to go and, like, secret agent it to go and fucking save Madonna. <laughs> and then fucking... Fine. And then he... And then after all that happens, he's trying to, like, trying to find himself and center himself. Madonna breaks up with him. Oh, he kills Pablo Escobar. Madonna takes over as the lead drug runner of the world. And so he leaves um, the the life behind, and he goes and he works in his father's factory. And there he re- reconciles with his father. They make up. He learns that his father was actually Amish, and he escaped the Amish community to come to, you know, regular society to kind of be a normal person. So as they're discovering this, they discover that his father was actually um a music writer and while he was writing music he you know just kept it to himself because he always thought it was not something he was allowed to like really push himself into because of his Amish upbringing so he hit it and one of the songs that Weird Al discovers is Amish Paradise <laughs> it's so fucking weird dude I gotta tell you I was not expecting to have as much fun with this film because I was really expecting just a normal biopic. And it's not a normal biopic. It is so, so much fun. And maybe it's only for the people who, like, are really into Weird Al's music and into that parody kind of lifestyle. I I had loved Weird Al back in the 90s. I know I'm not going to sit here and say that I listen to him constantly. It was very much a 90s thing and an early 2000s thing. You know, when I was in high school, I thought it was funny to go back and, you know, experience that little part of history. So that's just me. And it's not for everybody. But the story in and of itself is worth watching. It's just so out there. And the second you realize that it's more of a, it's more written as satirical towards his actual life, the funnier it becomes, the more comical each step sort of takes. And then you go and you look up anything that's factual, which obviously is a whole bunch of things that aren't factual, but there's even smaller things that aren't 100% factual that still sort of hold a little bit of weight in the um the, the the concept of the film so like one thing is there's this small portion where he starts drinking for the first time and he becomes like a raging alcoholic for like 20 minutes or something and that's not true weird al was ne- never had an alcohol issue in real life however they do portray in a concert where weird al walks on stage with a bottle of jack and no shirt and he starts saying a bunch of shit to the crowd at the end of the movie they show, like, images from that actual concert that happened. So I don't know what the full backstory behind that is, but even though there are very few things that are actually from Weird Al's real life in this, you know, in this idea of a biopic, it still has this hint of truth in it that you do see a lot of when the film comes to an end and they start showing, like, the things that are actually connected to it. For example... The film has um, Rain Wilson in it, who everybody knows as Dwight from The Office. He plays uh, Dr. Dementor, which I didn't know was a real person, but apparently it was. And this was a dude who was kind of like the the um, the mentor to Weird Al in real life. 
But what's even funnier than that is there's a scene where he's he's like he's looking at uh, Doctor D and he's telling him like, "Oh, you're going to be my mentor," and he's like, "Maybe, maybe I'll be your D mentor." Which is funny because that's his actual name, Doctor Dementor. But it's even funnier when you think of the fact that he's talking to Daniel Radcliffe, who's in Harry Potter, and who had to deal with like these beings called Dementors. It's just little things like that. It's just it just wraps this whole thing around in a nice little you know have fun and sit down and watch this completely random fucking movie kind of moment. It's. I, I don't even have any other words for it. It's just really weird, and it fits its name for who it's about.